you trying to dominate your fantasy football league? Do you want so many championship rings, it's impossible to sign autographs? Well, crack open a beer, pour yourself a glass of bourbon, and settle in, because you've come to the right place. Welcome to HammerCast. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, Hammercast Nation, IDP Army, it's Jordan Reigns, joined today by Joe Herboff on the Hammercast Network, and we are bringing you Stacking the Box, Episode 1. How you guys doing today? What's up, everybody? Excited to talk some players. We're going to talk some, uh, are we talking sleepers today or are we talking like value picks? How would we describe these guys? Well, a few of them I definitely describe as sleepers. Um, there's one that I think that's got a lot of hype due to his new contract he received, but uh, without the, uh, depending on the designation he receives this year, whether he's a uh, a sell or a buy. Yeah, fair. Well, um, let's just kick it off, I guess. Are we? Let's talk about the first guy on your list. Who you got for us today, Joe? Oh, and by the way, guys. Like this video, subscribe to this channel. We are going to be, we might not always be in this format, but we will be coming back to you on this channel again with more shows. Joe's going to be the primary host. I believe is how we're going to work that out. And then we'll have rotating second seats, but I'll probably be here a good bit too. So yeah, and check out our channel, the IDP Army channel. But anyway, back to today's show. Yeah, so uh, the first guy I want to talk about is Logan Wilson, linebacker out of Cincinnati. This dude is only 24 years old. He was a third-round pick uh, last year's draft, and he had a limited snap count. He only played about 340 snaps last season, but the dude put up numbers on, on a limited snap count. He, uh, the Cincinnati moved on from Josh Bynes, who was third in the league in tackles, so that, that opened up 761 snaps. So Third on the team. Or yeah, third yeah. on the team, sorry. Yeah, Very and um, so... With that, the draft always dictates, you know, how we actually move forward. But barring them drafting an early linebacker, I think this guy could be a steal in most leagues. I looked in the leagues that I'm currently in, uh, dynasty wise, and he was available in two of two of the five. So I would I would snatch him up now before uh, he takes off because come week two or three, he may not be available. Yeah, I love that. You know, uh, two interceptions, like you said, just in. 343 snaps. I mean, that's big right there. Tackles are a little bit low, but <clears throat> for, you know, being on the field as little as he did, he still had 10 impact plays. That's big. Uh, four tackles for loss. So I, I love that pick. Any Anything else about him? What kind of value are you putting on him? Like if you're going to go get him, if you're going to go get him a trade, what would you give? Uh, I mean, honest, obviously he's available on some waivers, so he can't be worth too much, but what yeah, would you? Yeah, he'd be more of a, maybe a, an add in piece to a trade you're already working. You know, a lot of times you, you get close and, and you feel like you can get a little bit more. I think he's the type of guy that you could throw in and whoever has him probably, if they do have him, probably isn't super high on him off of last year's production. But I, I think that had, he's only going to go up from here and he did miss four games due to injury last year. So um, that also kind of hindered him, but uh, he should be fully healthy this year. And I think the snap count will only go up. Nice, nice. Yeah, I uh, I like that pick. You know, like we said, we illustrated here, if you are watching on the YouTube channel, we just pulled up a, a graphic we got from the IDP Army channel, but uh, we had Logan Wilson versus Isaiah Simmons as rookies. Uh, we had 343 snaps for Isaiah or for Logan Wilson versus 376 for Simmons. Simmons did have about 20 more tackles, but impact plays, uh, Logan Wilson was step for step with him. And when we checked PFR, you know, pro football reference and – the passer rating allowed is interesting. Isaiah Simmons allowed a 106 passer rating when targeted. Uh, Logan Wilson, though, had a much lower. He had a 66.4 passer rating. Only missed two tackles. Isaiah Simmons did miss five. And then IDP 1-2-3 scoring format, um, we did have a 6.9 for Logan Wilson and just about one more point per game for Isaiah Simmons. But, again, he was getting a lot more tackles. So. Yeah, and, and Wilson, he seemed to exceed in coverage. Um, he wasn't he did struggle a little bit on the run defense, but I think that he can he can learn that as he develops. Yeah, agreed, agreed. All right. Well, who else do you got for us here on the sleeper list? Well, the uh, Tennessee Titans made a big splash this year, adding Bud Dupree, who who had a who has had a, a couple good years in Pittsburgh. 
Um, he signed a five-year, $85 million contract, which for real p- football purposes, I think he's a great addition. Um, so fantasy football-wise, I think, me personally, I think that it's not a great fit for him. Um, I, I hope it works out great because I, I own him in a few different leagues. Um, it, Tennessee two years ago signed J- J- Jadavion Clowney, and that was a big swing and a miss. So I really hope they get this one right. Clowney's a miss. He's a miss everywhere. He yeah, goes. he was. He was a huge swing and a miss. Uh, but yeah. last year, uh, Dupree played, you know, just 11 games. But during those 11 games, he did have nine sacks, but only 15 solo tackles. So he really only, you know, took a, you know, got six other solo tackles. So the the sacks, you know, you were really dependent on. Uh, he did have the 43 pressures that ultimately led to uh, nine QB hits. Mm, I'm looking here. I got 23 solos, which still not not great. 31 total in 11 games, but it's a few more than that from what I'm oh, okay. looking at. But but still not not what you want from a pass rusher per no. se. Uh, that's a very low floor, and he played 11 games, yeah. so not ideal for Bud Dupree. But I, I like I like him going there because he gets to play next to uh, Simmons, Jeffrey Simmons. Harold Landry is, you know, he's going to get a lot of snaps like Harold Landry did. So that means there will be opportunities for those tackles to go up. And Bud Dupree, you know, say all you want about him. He is an impact player. Uh, 20 this last year in 11 games. You know, impact impact plays being anything that's three or more points in IDP, one, two, three scoring. Uh, 37 in 2019, which is only one less than the leader of 2020. So he was. He's up there. I mean, he's a big dog when it comes to making impact players on the field. I know he did. The, the injury is a little bit concerning, but coming off the edge there, it's a pretty much, it's not a lot of lateral movement. It's going to be forward and backwards. So I, I like him there. It is going to be, he's going to be cheap, you know, in drafts. He'll be cheap to get in trades. I think that I, I love, I, I personally like the move for Tennessee. I know a lot of people have said, a lot of people kind of dogged it. Uh, but I, I thought it was a great move by Tennessee to get another pass rusher who has legit chops to play next to Harold Landry, who is Harold Landry is a lot more middle of the road pass rusher than Bud Dupree is. And people are trying to talk about Bud Dupree like he's middle of the road. That's just my take on the situation. Well, but, it'll be interested to see how he handles not playing next to TJ Watt, you know, with him being the big dog on the team. Um, I do see Harold Landry and Jeffrey Simmons gaining the most out of this. Um, but it would be interesting if, if he does get the defensive lineman designation, I think that will increase his value even more. Um, I, if he does obtain that, I would put him as a, a, a low end uh, D lineman, too. So, I mean, he'd be a great addition that way. But if he's still a linebacker, I'm a little lower on him than most. Um, but I, I would use him as a flex option then with but he, he does have uh, the great matchup, you know, He's a, a matchup guy, so if he's going against a guy like you know Daniel, Mister Fumble himself, Daniel Jones, you know you might want to play him that week, barring you know your other options. Yeah, he he definitely has the boom factor. He's got one of the fastest get offs of the line in the league. I think he was top three in that. So yeah, I love I like Bud Dupree. He's in my uh, in the ultimate IDP index. If you guys are on the IDP Army Patreon, which you should go check out, um, I have him in the in the studs category. So that's one above starter and flex. So he's a guy that I'm probably going to be trying to get into my lineup every week just because if you can catch that spike week, it could win you a week. Uh, but yeah, the tackle floor is a little bit concerning with him. So who is our next guy on this list? Well, he's another free agent addition this year, and he went to Carolina, Hassan Reddick. He uh, was a former first-round pick. He really didn't get the opportunities uh, up until last year as far as his snap count. Um, He did have 56 pressures last season that led to 13 sacks, 35 hurries, and eight quarterback hits. He did have 62 total tackles, um, but he's averaged 72 tackles while being a starter for three years. Um, He did have that massive... 59 point game last year against Mr. Fumble himself, Daniel Jones, that he, he had obtained five sacks and three forced fumbles. So there was a lot, you know, he, he added in on that one game, but I think he's still a great addition and he'll, uh, he'll only help bolster that young defense with, with Jeremy Chin. Yeah. Chin, Brian Burns. Um, they got the, the, the Derek Brown, the tackle and, you know, Reddick is, He's got an interesting skill set um, because he can rush the passer and he can make tackles. 
that is one thing you like about him. You look at his career, what do we got here? 63, 76, and then 80 combined tackles over the last three years. He's only been a full-time starter, never. So you have that kind of tackle floor with a non-starter. Plus, you're you're talking about a guy who now is going to be moved to the defensive end position from what I saw, at least on MFL, yeah. hoping he gets that DL tag on sleeper. If you can get 50, if you can even get 50 tackles out of this guy in eight sacks, you're going to want to put him in your lineup. And I think that's totally reasonable for him. And honestly, I think that's kind of what we're looking at as a floor for him this next year. Um, if, again, if you're watching on YouTube, which hopefully you are, uh, I'm going to pull up the impact play leaders from this year. You heard me say just a moment ago that the top guy for impact plays was Bud Dupree, their previous year uh, with 37. The top guy for impact plays this year, another outside linebacker, that is Hassan Reddick. They do get a little bump over the edge guys because – they get the sacks counted towards them as impact plays since they are not DL eligible, so they get a few there. But even if you take away his 13 sacks, he would have been in, what, fourth on this list? I think that will put him in like 28, 29. So either way, sacks or not, he was making a lot of plays, 15 tackles for loss. Uh, we had four pass deflections. He's been good for four, six, and five the past two year, three years. So that's not an accident. That's a skill set. Um, I love to see that on him. And yeah, and if we know, if we've discovered a new skill set for him in rushing the passer, which like you said, the pressures were there and they did lead to sacks. He's a finisher. Uh, I'm about that. That's 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 a juice I'm willing to squeeze. Uh, I've made a couple of trades to get him this offseason in some dynasty leagues. I had him and picked him up late in the season last year in some dynasty leagues. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm in on Hassan Redick. I love that pick. Well, and a, a great reference is he scored 18 or more points six times last season. And, you know, Bobby Wagner did that eight times. So he, he was right there with him pretty well. And Bobby Wagner's considered this elite, which he is. He is elite for, for fantasy purposes. And uh, he was just right behind him. So and if you can get that under a defensive lineman designation, you're going to start that almost every week. You yeah, know, you'd you. love to get that. Yeah. So I, I look at him as a potential low end uh, DL one with every week. He's going to be a, a defensive lineman, too, if he gets that designation. Nice, nice. Love that pick. Love that pick. And then we had just four today, right? So we got one more guy. Yes. Uh, so I want to talk about Jordan Poyer. So I know everybody knows this guy. He's been he's been good for quite some time now. But it seems like the narrative with him is to sell. Every year you look in the leagues and he's everyone's trying to move him. He's not as a sexy name anymore. He will be 30 by the time the season starts, but he's still a stud. So if this guy, if you have him, I, there's, I wouldn't move him. But if, if you know the owner out there is trying to move him, I would go after him. Uh, he was snubbed from the Pro Bowl last year, which I think was a crime. Mm -hmm. And uh, so one reference is he <clears throat> led the league by defensive backs in tackles. He, he did have two sacks, two forced fumbles, and two interceptions, which are all you know important impact plays. Impact plays. He only went under double digits last season twice, and one of those he scored nine. So he has a super high floor for a defensive back, and which is something that you absolutely want to look for. And let's see. He finished two overall in fantasy scoring at the position yeah, within who, six points of Levante David, who's a linebacker who's catching all kinds of hype, who, who, is, who is a great linebacker, but he's, he's right there in that same field but he's a defensive back. So you can get him. You can get linebacker numbers out of a defensive back. Yeah, that's, so, it's, it's really impressive. Yeah. And it's, you know, it's interesting with him is every year for the last three years, I believe three or four years, he's uh, his tackles have been going, uh, going up. His impact plays have been going down a little bit, but you know, whenever you can do one or the other, that's that makes up for it. So that's why you look at skill sets, not just like, you know, the past year's, um, you know, points or past year's plays, you look for a variety of skill sets, you look for a snap count to be intact, and then you go from there and you are able to build projections out on the kind of player that you have. We know Jordan Poyer has been a high impact player in the past, pushing up into those 20s. He didn't get there this year, but we've seen his tackle numbers go up. So his points have still maintained what you what you want from a player and as as guys get a little bit older you know we saw this with Antoine Bethay um some sometimes they just the, the impact plays do go down uh but the tackles go up and that that still means you're a valuable piece to any team and he's a he's a savvy vet i mean he made some plays in the playoffs Jordan Poyer did that were you know you good plays you know something you want from a safety and he you know getting stuff from the pro bowl yeah that was that was insane uh, you know he was you know he is essentially the heart and soul of that 
of that Bills defense. You know, it's not Tremaine Edmonds. Don't tell me that. It's nobody on the line. Um, it's Jordan Poyer. So, yeah, I think he's being underrated again. You know, even if he is 30, so what? Malcolm Jenkins just put up a top 15 yep. season at defensive back, and what's he, 34? So if you're telling me I have the potential to get three more DB1 seasons out of this guy and somebody's selling him for less than market DB1 value – and I have the, the luxury of knowing he can do it. I've looked, I've can look back at his career because he is 30. I know he can do these kind of numbers. Yeah, that, that's a screaming buy in Dynasty uh, for sure, especially for an every week plug and play guy. So, absolutely. Yeah, his floor is, is just too high to, to, to devalue. I mean, I, I would not sell him if I had him. Absolutely not. Yeah. Yeah. Well, all right. That's, that's it. This has been uh, this has been fun. How do you? What do you guys think about the show? Leave us a comment. Um, let us know what stuff you want us to bring to this channel. The show is going to be every other week. Like I said, Joe will be the primary host, I believe. I'll try to be on here if I can. Uh, but we're going to bring you the best that we can from the IDP Army, uh, which is growing. We are very happy to be on the channel, providing some value for the Hammer Nation. We appreciate the Hammercast crew. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at 50 Shades of Drunk. Joe, where can I find you on Twitter? You can find me on Twitter at Fantasy G.I. Joe. There you go. G.I. Joe Fantasy. Yes, Fantasy G.I. Joe. All right. Well, until next time, Hammer Nation, uh, we will be back soon. Follow us. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments, and we will try to get them for you. All right. Peace out, everybody. Did you get all that? If not, make sure you head over to HammerCast.com. Subscribe and join the Hammer Nation. Until next time, keep grinding.